This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. So you had indicated that you would like to talk about manifestation and divine timing, which Mm -hmm. seem to be two different ideas on the same uh, train tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So talk a little bit about about that. Well, uh, everywhere, it's we are co-creators with God and we can, we're responsible for our own uh, not destiny, but our own whatever happens to us, our own realities, that's the word. Mm-hmm. And affirmations are just everywhere. These are the affirmations you say every morning, every night, and six times during the the day. And you're going to bring about certain realities in your life. I think that's hugely um, positive in terms of being encouraging and faith building and all of that business. And And mm-hmm. yeah. But then here comes the idea of divine timing, and I'd like to know, hear you talk about how those two concepts relate or don't. Okay. Um, the, the first thing is, all right, affirmations and manifesting work. And what happens is if we have some degree of doubt in our mind about the good that we deserve or that we're, that we haven't experienced so far. And you, you pick the topic of what we can use as an example for what somebody might do in affirmations or for manifesting. Um, that, let's keep it really simple. Somebody is looking for a new automobile or a okay. new house, either one. Hmm. We'll make it a car, a replacement automobile. And the way that it works is it's different. You know, if somebody who's never had a car wants a car, then it might seem completely unattainable. And if it's somebody who's always had a car, but suddenly their car isn't working properly, and this is going on for my daughter and son-in-law at this time, the old car uh, decided that it's going to the, go to the car graveyard instead of drive them back and forth <laughs> to the supermarket. They're involved in the process now of finding the appropriate car and taking care of the paperwork and dotting the I's and crossing the T's and so forth so that they have a different car. There's not a whole lot of disbelief in their mind that they're going to wind up with a car. Mm -hmm. Now, for them, the question might be along the lines of how much of a nuisance is the process going to be? How much are we going to be inconvenienced? How much more is it going to cost than we felt like paying? And what are the other changes and disruptions to our lifestyle? So in their case, the affirmations or the manifesting would be for this to be a smooth and harmonious and uplifting process and uh, with a smattering of prosperity thrown in there. They're going to get a better deal on a better car than they might have otherwise expected. For somebody who's never had a car and they're walking all the time or taking the bus, they're walking down to the bus station or the train stop and they're spending their life at a trolley station waiting for their trolley to come through. And what they really want to do is have a car because it's three buses and a transfer in order to get to from where they are to where they want to be. And they've never had a car. It's the same process for them, but the, the disbelief, the wall of disbelief is much higher because they don't know if it's possible because it's never happened before. They've never had that in their experience. It's never been something that is theirs. So just saying, you know, the process of me getting a a new car comes together easily and joyously and effortlessly, and I get a better car than I thought I was going to get, and it winds up being completely affordable. As soon as they start saying that in their minds, 
all the alarm bells go off. That can't happen. I don't have that. I've never had a car. I don't know about insurance. And, and the, the whole committee starts shrieking at them in the privacy of their own head. And what happens is the co-creative process is not activated by the words that we say. The co-creative process is activated by the beliefs that we have. So if you want to know what you believe, listen to those voices screaming in your head after you claim something good. <laughs> If they're pushing back against it, then it's probably out of range of your belief. And the divine timing has to do with our belief. Okay. I'm right. You want me to keep talking? Or you yeah, gotta, I'm you writing gotta, you gotta this down. There. I'm, I'm, I got okay. you. <laughs> There's also the notion of unintended consequences. Because when somebody decides, I want to have a car, they're making an assumption that they actually want to have a car. And they could wind up with a car and their car could get stolen the first day that they have it, or their car could get T-boned in an intersection and, you know, somebody could get injured or the, the brakes could fail and it could go into a tree or whatever. There's all sorts of different possibilities, things that can happen. And if they just arrogantly say, I want to have a car because I need a car and I deserve a car, then the universe, which is infinite possibilities and the co-creative power that's creating everything will respond to whatever those doubts are, those hesitations are, and bring about whatever unintended thing they might have had lurking in their mind. And how many people do you know, the first time they get a car, the first thing that happens is they smack it into something. <laughs> Could be. Yeah, you've heard that story before. So that the unintended consequences of saying, this is what I want, and assuming that we know what we want, and the idea for me is a layer of abstraction. Instead of saying, this is the fact, this is the circumstance, this is the situation, this is the scenario that I want to have happen because I know best and that's what's going to make everything be okay. We take it a step away from that. So there's the experience that the person's been having of getting himself to work by, you know, taking three different buses and having a transfer or a trolley or whatever it and what they want to do is they want it to be easier to get to work. And they know that having a car is going to make it easier to get to work. Instead of praying for the car, instead of doing the manifesting and the affirmations for the car, do it for the harmonious experience of easy, effortless, prompt, affordable transportation. I know that I get everywhere that I need to go easily and promptly and on time and comfortably and safely. And that may show up as a wonder, it might show up as a Volvo. Somebody might say, I'm, I, I have, <laughs> I'm moving overseas. I need somebody to take my car. Do you want my Volvo? No, nice, safe car. They get to drive around in somebody else's Volvo. doesn't cost them a penny. Mm -hmm. It also could be that there's uh, the newbie, <laughs> the new guy that just got hired at work, lives next door and is driving back and forth to the same office anyway. Oh, you want to ride together? I'd love to have somebody. I, I hate driving by myself. Uh, okay. And then there's no car payment, there's no insurance, all the rest of it. You're, it's like getting chauffeured. Mm -hmm. And that still fits the bill of what we're praying for, which is that effortless, affordable, easy, convenient, comfortable transportation, getting me exactly where I need to be in exactly the perfect moment. It can be better than we thought. It can be better than we thought. And divine timing, the universe is always going to say yes. So if we insist that we got to have a car, I need a car, I need a car now, I need to have it, and this is, this is the circumstance it's going to be, and everything else, then the universe will go, well, there's a whole lot of other things that you might want to consider, but you seem to be really focused on that. And that's when we open ourselves up to the possibility that, yes, you have that brand new, wonderful car for 16 seconds until somebody smacks into it. Because <laughs> you got exactly what you said you wanted, even though it wasn't nearly what you thought you wanted. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just a tad too negative for me on that one. I, I get what you're saying, but I, how many I, people have, have you, have you, have you known who decided that they want to be in a relationship with that guy or that woman? And the universe says yes. And it turns out to be a nightmare for both of them. Well, that's like a lot. <laughs> a lot. Of that's time. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You can, oh my goodness, I did a whole workshop around something like that. And it's <laughs> <laughs> because it's to happen so often. So let me see. Um, so what, what you are saying is that we are actually 
desire, we're actually desiring to manifest the feeling. Right. The circumstance that produces or will bring with it the feeling that I want to have. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And we think we know what we want. But we actually, we want that so that we're going to have an experience or a feeling. And it is much better for us to set the intention to have that feeling and let go of the details. Yeah. Well, that's the hard part right there, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's we the are hard hardwired to, for our ego says, I know, we, I know how this is going to work. <laughs> well, and then this is new though. This is new. So we have to be open to the fact that what we want isn't really what we initially thought. It, it could be, it could come another way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that that's not what we're accustomed to. So that's going to take a little bit of work on that one. Well, that's, that's the emotional maturity in the whole thing. That's partnering. That's actually being co-creative with that infinite creative power is letting go of the thought that we in our small ego mind know what's going to be best and allow ourselves to be in partnership with that infinite creative power that creates everything. Instead of using that power a little bit for what we think is going to be uh, manipulating it to do what we want. Perfect example. Somebody wants a new house. They've decided that the house that they're in is too small. It's not working properly. So they decide that they want a new house and this is what they have to spend. And these are, this is the place that they want to live. And these are the specifics and the parameters and the specifications and so forth. And they go around looking for houses and they wind up with a house that fits all of their specifications and they move in and it's great for a week. And then it turns out that the EPA is coming over because <laughs> your backyard. Yeah. Let me tell you what your backyard used to be. Um, you know, or suddenly the landslide happens and the mountain behind the house comes down into the house. And is that why they got the deal that they got? Not necessarily. It's possible for all of that stuff to fit together. But we're so short-sighted when we say, I know all of what it is that I want to have happen. So instead of just saying, I want it to be this house in this zip code with this many bedrooms, it's, I want to have the perfect place to live, to raise my family, to uh, host family events, to have my friends come over and play Pinochle in the rec room, Whatever that flavor is, what is the, we, what we really want to be experiencing? Not what do we want to have? What do we want to experience? Mm. And then it may turn out that there's a townhouse that's attached to somebody else's house and we didn't think was what we were looking for, but everything winds up being perfect. Oh, and the people who live on either side wind up being best friends. You know, the, it, it's hard to argue with that. The only thing I'm saying is that it's not something that we are accustomed to. Now, maybe... Maybe if you were always new thought, perhaps. <laughs> On the side of the street where I came from, that is not the way it goes. So, but I'm going with this house thing that you were talking about because the first house my husband and I bought, it was such a fabulous house. Oh, it was such a fabulous house. And it met all the specifications that you mentioned and more, you know? And mm -hmm. I just started... It was like the house you buy that you know you're going to stay forever because everything you can imagine that you want to change is easy, easily done. Anyway, mm -hmm. I had this house. And it, it, my three children each had their own bedrooms and room for friends. And it was in a nightmare location, right? That we didn't... <laughs> <laughs> we were young. We didn't know. We just... Whatever. And it was, it was a total freaking nightmare, you couldn't even get rid of the thing. Mm -hmm. Right now, I I was thinking back while you were talking, what was I thinking? You know, I wanted all of that stuff because the assumption was that I was going to feel all that stuff, but I didn't know to ask for it. Do you know what I mean? I just assumed yep. that if I got this, this, and this, all of the, it was just going to be a wonderful life. And yep. it was crazy. It was crazy. Totally crazy. And as I recall, you grew up as the child of a used house salesman. <laughs> My father was a realtor, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, should have known. Who knows? Yeah. You know, there's there's always something there. Yeah. But 
when we talk about the specifics and the things that our, that our mind, that our ego tells us that we want, we can lose sight of what it is that we really want to experience. Mm-hmm. It is magical, magical, magical to be able to put that layer of abstraction in. Okay, so these are the things that I think I want to have. And that's going to make me feel this way. So now I'm just going to set my intention on the way I want to feel. I'm having an experience that lets me feel this good. And then let go of the details. Okay, if it winds up being, you know, one zip code over, or if it winds up being a, in a different school district, or if it winds up being, uh, you know, the, the, the land or the, the, it's on a hill, you didn't think it was going to be, on a hill. whatever, who cares? Mm-hmm. Who cares? The infinite that we are co-creating co- and partnering with is going to bring those pieces together in a way <clears throat> that we might not understand. And that gets back around to divine timing. Yeah. I don't know about how divine timing fits in. I was <laughs> I was working with you <laughs> as you were talking and I was thinking about the nightmare that we experienced there. Uh, you yeah. gotta, you gotta always be on because once you get what you want, you get everything else that comes with it. And mm-hmm. it's a good idea to kind of look at those things. And I, I'm laughing, right? Cause you meant, you reminded me that my father was a realtor and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know where things dropped off on that one. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it takes, I think we should be a little bit more deliberate and intentional, a little bit slower about things. Um, my daughter at the time we realized it was a nightmare. She was in kindergarten, I think, or first grade, one of the, kindergarten, and something was happening at the school. So you know, mom, the control freak, just went right up to that school to take mm-hmm. care of this thing. <laughs> and the principal was so sweet to me. She said, "You know where you live," and I thought. And this is the last day my child will be in this school because I'm not going to live here any longer. And as I walked to the door, you know, I don't know whether I don't know whether I was making affirmations or not. I said, Alexis, this is the last day you come to this school. Because I knew in Pennsylvania, you legally did not have to have your child in the school till, till they were eight. I said, mm-hmm. we got three years to find another school. We are out <laughs> of this. I can teach you what you need. Uh, and it wasn't a long time. Uh, but I don't know how that fits with divine timing. I guess in the very beginning, choosing, thinking, not being clear about, what did you call it? Mature way of looking at it. Is that the word you used? Yeah, that yeah. could be it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we, let, let's take a break, and then I will tell you about how the divine timing might have come together in that co-creative process. Okay, good. Thank you. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. I cannot wait to hear this part. Go ahead. So let me reestablish where we were. So uh, you were a young young family, and you got your dream house, and you moved mm-hmm. into the dream house, and all seemed to be going well. And then it uh, became apparent that there were some uh, issues, problems, difficulties, challenges. First day was it first day of school. 
Uh, the very a, beginning about of a school. week in, yeah, about a week or two in. A week into your, your oldest child being in school, uh, it became completely apparent that the neighborhood that you were in and the school that you were in and the house that you were in was completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So all of that fabulous manifesting that you had done up until then, getting exactly the perfect house, yeah. every, it met all the specifications. It turned out that it was, um, what's the uh, the spiritual word I'm going Sucketh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you determined that it sucketh. <laughs> yes, big time. So, and we were talking about all of this manifestation and divine timing. And you found this out after your daughter started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So she was actually already in school and suddenly the emergency lights came on and we, this, this is not a happening thing. This doesn't work. So the divine timing there was that you actually had a couple of years before your daughter needed to be in school. Mm -hmm. So the divine timing there is you got what you thought you wanted. Mm -hmm without actually getting what you really wanted. And the universe did it in such a way that you had, you didn't, you didn't move there when she was eight, mm -hmm. where you had no choice. Go to that school until you can find something different and transfer to her to another school when she's in third grade, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to do all of that. So there's a little bit of grace that was going on in there. as Because you, you were doing this in a spiritual way, you had an idea of what you wanted. You thought that the house met those specifications. And the important part is when it turns out that it wasn't right, you, <laughs> between talking to the principal and getting to the door, you knew that clarity was yours. You weren't fighting that. You weren't saying, well, we'll make this work. <laughs> the house is really great. We'll figure something else out. No, it's not going to happen. We're out of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, there's some, some spiritual and co-creative maturity in that as well. To be able to look a fact in the face and say, nope, something better is possible here. I'm turning away from this and I'm opening up to something different. Because we can. Mm -hmm. And the divine timing is letting us, making it possible for us to know exactly what it is that is important for us to know in a clear way at the perfect time. Now, do we always have divine timing? No. Do we always get that guidance? Well, I'm going to say no. And it's not that it's not given to us, but we don't necessarily get it. <laughs> there have been many times in my life where the universe has been giving me little signals like, no, I think you want to head in a different direction. Mm, this might not be going the way that you want it to be going. Oh, I don't. And I'm, you know, in my ego self, I barrel right ahead until I get to the edge of the cliff and then, you know, <laughs> off into free fall going, oh, well, <laughs> maybe I should have gone in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> hope I can think of something. Hope I can make this parachute work before the ground comes up to me. <laughs> You've been there, haven't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, let me, let's me let continue the story. So after you decided that you couldn't live there anymore, you weren't going to keep your daughter there anymore, mm -hmm. and you had additional clarity about the experience that you wanted to have, what happened next? I called a principal of a school where my sons were. And I explained what happened. And she didn't say a word. It's just that in a couple of hours, she called me back and said, my friend is a principal over at such and such school. You send her over there. She's ready for her. She will bring her, she'll, she'll keep her there. She only has to be there two weeks before we can transfer her into this school where my sons were. And, and it was like a private school. And, and she was originally not old enough to get there. And it all happened in less than 30 days. All, now I had to drive her a little bit of a distance every day to get her to this school to wait out the two weeks. And then she was transferred into a perfect school. That, by the way, they all stayed no matter where we lived because it was private. So nice. it worked out wonderfully well. I didn't see a thing. Of, here's the thing. Let me ask you this. Um, it's not like I set my intention and this is how it's going to work. Do you know? Mm -hmm. I said, God, I everything I do is for their good. And you understand that and you promised. And I can't do this without <laughs> you. And I just laid a whole thing out. You know, these boys have to be... Da -da 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 -da. Look, here's a problem. 
what what's going to happen here? And I was really intent. I never have ever been afraid of the circumstances that I'm facing. I go get, I go to what I used to say, I go to God and mm-hmm. plead my case because I'm going to win. Have I not ever won? I probably you know, or maybe the win came a little later, but I just don't accept less than good. Yeah. Do well, you have I mean? an expectation of good, but not an expectation of details. And I got to tell you, the, there's a huge difference between your approach and the approach that many people use when they're doing the the, the manifesting uh, practice of affirmations and claiming I'm prosperous, I am loving, I am you know important, I have my perfect high paying job is the, you're starting with spirit. Mm-hmm. You were starting with the awareness that this is a spiritual process. And inherent in that for you, and this language that I'm hearing, is that you're turning it over. You're in many ways surrendering. You know the good that you're claiming. Mm-hmm. Like my mm-hmm. daughter's in her perfect school. I, it, I'm taking her over to this one because it's near the house that we thought was our perfect house. And it turns out it's the wrong school. It's like, okay, God, I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to see how you're going to fix this. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> And leading with spirit, leading with the understanding that we're part of a huge creative team, there's that infinite creative power that creates everything, that has created each of us, and we're each using that same creative power to create the next experience in our life. We're not doing it ourselves. We're doing it as part of the one. So as long as we are aware that we're part of that big team, a lot more is possible for us than would be possible otherwise. And we don't get wrapped around the axle by thinking that we're figuring it out and, and, and pulling the levers ourselves. You know what? I just want to stop right here and thank you for that. I really, really do. Because I didn't know I was doing all that, <laughs> but you explained. <laughs> but you're exactly right. I mean, I wouldn't have said this is my attitude. It's just how I roll. That's just how I live. Just... That's all I know. And it took me back. You made me think about some work I'm doing now uh, with religious trauma and some other people. And um, I remember when I was at the Fundamentalist Church and I got excommunicated pretty much for, uh, <laughs> for having the audacity to get divorced and even worse to, you know, entertain the idea of getting married again. Whole nother show, but... Uh, I remember the day that I decided to leave that church, and you just described that day. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm almost choked up because I didn't understand that's what was happening, but that's how I live my faith. I stood mm-hmm. out there on the step, and I said, "God, I don't know where I'm where this is going. I can't stay here. It's always been me and you. Let's go." And I never forget those words. <laughs> it's me and you. Yeah. Let's go. And I never had a doubt. I didn't think that I'm going to be at such and such church. I just knew I would be with God. Um, you know, like partnering. You know, we're going to, something's going to happen here. I don't know what. This ain't it. Let's go. Yeah. Now, is what is that? That's faith to me. Uh, that's, yeah. that's yeah, I can't just... handle this crap, so you do it. Well, yeah, but the, the the whole thing fits in the umbrella of faith. I was going to, as you're talking about that, I was going to invite you uh, to, and this will be entertaining to watch as you do it. Um, had you, for whatever reason, not been able to leave that fundamentalist church, and you were still there now, tell us about the religious trauma that would have gone on in the last 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, here, here's the thing. I think about that, and this is, it sounds funny, but it's really not, like, I don't, I wouldn't have been able to live like that. I just no. wouldn't. Um, I know people have. There are some that are still there, and I just could not live like that. You know, and I'm when I say I couldn't breathe, I couldn't breathe spiritually, but also, I don't know if I could have allowed myself to live you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah you that you you were you were shackled there there was you yeah you, How? it wouldn't it, would not, it, it didn't it already didn't work it wasn't going to work if you'd stayed there it would have continued to not work it just would have been more painful for longer 
Yeah, but I want to. I want you to hear what I'm saying. You know, I don't know that I would have allowed myself to live because I had those. No, thoughts, you right. You would have had to smother yourself in so many ways just in order to fit in. Because they were ready to throw you out for the one thing. If you'd stuck around, they would have thrown you out for something else, and you would have had you would have spent, spent your entire life hiding. Yeah, but here's the here's the thing, you know, and I'm pushing this because there are other people listening to you right now. Okay. I would have voluntar- voluntarily left the planet. That's what it mm. means. And okay. when people are in places like that that are suffocating, that's what happens. Um, that's all I can say. That's what happens. Maybe. Okay. Maybe I'm not saying 10% of them do. I'm saying that you stop living, sure, uh, and just be where you are and you're unhappy the rest of your life. But then there are some who say, I can't do this, I'm out. And that's why I'm never, ever uh, condemning of people who choose to leave the planet because you don't know what made them choose that. And I looked at that and considered that because I didn't Mm. have a way out except for I got up, took a breath and said, God, yeah, it ain't going to be like this. It's got to be better. So I think, um, and I didn't mean to go down this road, but it's important because we're, you're, you and hopefully myself are offering people a a door to freedom to live their life. Um, But it's important to, to understand that while you, me, and others are offering an entrance to a a life of freedom is understanding what that life of imprisonment can be. Not just an upset, sad time because I'm, you know, here with these people, but maybe they have another way out and it's not the best way. And it might feel like there are no other choices. Yes. A lot of times that's, it, it feels like there's no other choice. And the, word of encouragement that I'll make is that there's always another choice. Yeah. I, For everybody who's listening, the reason you are here is because God has need of an instrument here. Mm. If you are not feeling it, if you are not getting fulfilled, if it's not working out for you, if people are telling you there's something wrong, there's a bad fit. You know, have you ever had the experience of putting a key into a lock and the key didn't work? You say mm-hmm. there's something wrong with this key or there's something wrong with this lock. There's nothing wrong with the lock and there's nothing wrong with the key. There's something wrong with the fit. So mm-hmm. go find another lock to put your key into, find another key to put into your lock and let go of the attachment that this has to be it. And if it's not, it's over. It's not true. It, because we can't see everything. And, and this is to your point of letting go and releasing and realizing that you don't have control. I say it this way to me. I can't see everything. I cannot see. Mm-hmm. Send me light. Send somebody or some sign, or, you know, a song played, or anything. I don't care what it is. I'm watching, because there's a way out of this, God, Spirit, whoever you are up there. I've even said, listen, whatever powers that be, I don't care how many of you are up there, whoever is in charge right now, somebody, (laughs) you know, send send the answer. Whoever's on duty. Whoever it is. Let's get a message. Get the message through. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm standing by. All right. Let's uh, take another break. And then (laughs) what a wonderful lot of things that we have to pray about. Mm. We'll do that. Is Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand? That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at BeTheLight.com. That's B-The-Light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at BeTheLight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. 
The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We have been having a wonderful conversation about manifestation, manifestation and divine timing and the way that the pieces can fit together to bring uplift and harmony and good, as we describe it, into our lives. Or the same pieces can come together the way that we thought they should and bring anything but comfort and harmony and prosperity into our lives. Here's a hint. It's not the things. <laughs> <laughs> It's the fit. It's the way the pieces are coming together. So we're going to do a prayer. And the prayer is about that balance between the divine timing and the manifestations, about creating the experience or having the experience that we want to be having, that desire that we are having being fulfilled, and being able to partner with that. And there are two things that are required. There is that divine guidance, the infinite suggesting to us what our next perfect step is. And then there's also the surrender, where we get to let go of the thought that the way that we thought we should be going and the path that we thought we were going to be on is the right path. The surrender is hugely important because unless we're willing to let go of what we thought we knew, there's no room in our awareness or our consciousness for something new. That new guidance is going to fall essentially on deaf ears. The way I like to describe it is if somebody is lost in the woods, it's a two-step process. Pray, and then start walking. And if people just start walking without a prayer, they tend to walk in circles. And they wind up back in the same place again, and then it gets panicky, because now it's going to be getting dark or cold or whatever, and they're lost in the woods. If they just pray and don't do anything, just sit there, it's possible that somebody will come along and find them, but they're not going to walk out of the woods on their own. So the willingness to take that step, to, to follow the guidance, to be engaged in the creative process is important. But both pieces are important. When someone's lost in the woods, pray and begin walking. The divine will carry you. The, the divine will guide you and your feet will carry you. And there is success and harmony. And it's not like we're looking to be guided to a particular location. Oh, okay, I want, my, I want the path to lead to a motel that looks like this with a bar that looks like that, that's serving these particular drinks on special right when I get there. That's not necessary. What I want to do is have that experience of being safe and comfortable and no longer lost in the woods, whatever the, 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 the corollary or the, 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 the correspondence to being lost in the woods is. And the prayer is easy. It's a surrender to start by letting go of everything except what we know is true. And that is that there is one infinite creative power that creates everything. One divine presence that shares itself as all of its creation. We call it God. We call it spirit. We call it nature. We call it the Big Bang. We call it whatever it is that we call it. It is that one source that shares itself as all of its creation. And it's sharing itself right now and at every moment as me and as each of us. Everyone who's listening to this prayer is a divine and perfect expression of that one. The mind which we, we think is that same divine mind. So as we find ourselves in a circumstance or a situation that is either not to our liking or we are not clear on what's the highest and best, how can this unfold in a way that's good for me? Our first step is to surrender, to let go of the thought that we know what's going on, that we're in charge, and open to the awareness that that infinite creative power, that divine mind that knows all, can inform us and guide us and inform us as to our next perfect steps. So I know that's what's happening right now. That infinite intelligence is guiding each one listening to this prayer with exactly the right insights and ideas and understanding to bring that desired experience into life. And the wonderful thing is there's nothing that stands in the way of that. There is no power that can block that infinite creative mind. That divine light is always shining. Anytime there's a shadow that appears, it's because something temporarily has blocked the light. And by allowing that shadow to be removed, the light is shining, the good is flowing, and that wisdom is at hand. 
That's what's going on. That's what's going on right now. It's good and more good and more good for each of us in our own way. And I'm so, so grateful for it. And so with gratitude for all of this good, I speak this word and I release it into the same creative law that creates everything. And I know it's now creating this. This good is underway now. And so I let it be. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of Be The Light.com. Be the Light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.